Okay, making sure I actually have audio. Sorry, it's a bit chaotic because there's people in the room who are not supposed to be in the room. Sit, sit, sit with the dealers. Come on. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh, this is stretching. All right. Yeah, just grab chairs as needs be. Somebody can have this one. That's fine. Sorry, this is incredibly chaotic. Y you sit off in the corner. That's fine. Yeah, they do have a t they have a breakout. Monica, go. Trey, go. Daniel, go. David, go. Kevin, go. Jim, go. Jake, go. Brennan, go. Bon Butts, go. Yang, you come over here. Benji, get over here. Eric, get over here. Ardelia, get over here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Calgary. This is just, it's gone absolutely banana sandwich. Come on. Come on. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, so for the breakout, it is M O A R A R. It's more active record. Oh, you're not looking at the right thing yet. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, more R. Uh, we're just going to be talking about a few more features of active record. Also, Sam. Hi. I wasn't sure if you were talking to Calgary or talking to my tum tum. All right. <laughs> Can it be both? Can it be both? <laughs> Just speaking directly into my right nipple. All right. So. <laughs> okay. Well, now that I've said nipple on video twice, uh, <laughs> like how Don just walks out to hear that. That's great. Yeah, fair enough. Fur nerf. Okay. So, um, yeah, bench. All right. Okay, so, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm going to let you know, uh, generally speaking, if you just decide to ignore everything I'm about to say, uh, if, you, if you get a little whatever, the Rails Guides is like a great source of information and clarity on what Active Record does. So, they have stuff on... Active records, basics, migrations, validations, callbacks, associations, the query interface. Lots to learn there. All right? So if, you, if you're like, I think what I want you to take from the breakout, and to be honest, from a lot of lectures, is less about, okay, I've listened to that person, and I know what to do. What I want you to think about is, there is a way to do X. Right? You can learn, okay, this is how they do X. Okay, fine. But I want you mostly to think there's a way to do this thing. You guys have done a lot. You guys have learned a lot. You guys have made a lot. And so I feel like from here on in, it's more about like, okay, I just need to know that there is a way to do X, and then we'll be able to do that thing. You know what I'm saying? Pick it up and up and down. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on validations. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on callbacks, and uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in particular that uh, I might want to get to. Nope, already talked about associations, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's, let's get into it. Validations. Now, there's kind of two types of validations. Like we've We've already built some validations into the schema, if you guys remember, right? So when I created the schema, I was able to say things like foreign key or null false, which creates um, a foreign key association or not null. And those things are like proper SQL constraints. That is to say, when I say, can somebody tell me what a constraint is in SQL? It's like a rule. So if I try to save or update data, that causes a violation of that rule, it will not let me. And it will give me an error that says, hey, I can't do this because blank, right? 
So if I have a not null field and I try to set it to null either when I'm creating or after the fact, it's going to let me know, right? So the validations we're talking about here, the active record validations, aren't actually happening in the database. We can set up validations happen in the database. That's fine. But these ones are actually happening on the Ruby side. So Ruby is going to do these validations, and then it's going to like let me know. And these might even be validations that require a select statement. So let's see some of those. Validations. Cool. So we can have something that validates name presence true. So let me uh, touch validations.arb. All right. And I'm going to require relative connection. All right. So let me uh, create. Let me create a uh, a schema. schema dot define do and okay uh, and then uh, drop table uh, what am I making it what am I what am I making birds Calgary can you beat birds as a thing to make I know it's going to take a while to hear back from you but I have I have I have some faith in your abilities. Uh, let me know. Dinosaurs, bam! Right, that's happening. Drop table dinosaurs. Oh, I just killed all the dinosaurs. Uh, if active record colon base dot connection dot. I'm just gonna say table exists because it's shorter, and I know it's a table. And then I'm going to say create table um, dinosaurs do t dot name uh, oh sorry t dot string name t dot string uh, uh, species t dot should I have a separate one for the genus as well? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do string that. You guys know that genus, like you guys learned the kingdom phylum class or the family genus species? Some of you have been in a science class? All right. Good. <laughs> I didn't write fungus. I wrote genus. Kingdom phylum class. Or I don't know what you're doing. All right, uh, genus species T dot boolean is carnivore. We're going to include the omnivores in here. And, uh, yeah, cuteness. This is going to be a, this is going to be a string. And we'll, we'll set up what that's going to look like. OK, so I could do things here like say uh, null false. Hi. Oh, hey, friends. What are you guys talking about over there? Because I'm talking about active record. All right. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say species could be nullable. I'm going to say is carnivore. I might set a default to true or to false, I guess. T string cuteness. Well, we're not going to say how that works on this side. So I have some uh, stuff here. If I Ruby validations RB, it's going to create create table dinosaurs ID name character varying not null species character varying uh, is carnivore boolean default false, which means I can make it null, but it's going to have a default false value, right? So technically speaking, it is nullable after its initial creation. So I'm going to make class dinosaur here, right? And it's going to extend active record. What do I put after this? Base. 
as in ace of right. Please tell me you guys remember it. Some, somebody knows ace of base in here. Alifia is very excited. I want to let the record show Alifia is very excited about ace of base. She clearly saw the sign. All right. Uh, <laughs> or all your base belong to us. That works too. So, um, so what happens if we make a dinosaur? Dinosaur. Uh, let's make T-Rex equals uh, string name, no false. What is the actual genus and species for Tyrannosaurus rex? Let's find out. Because uh, it not actually have a genus and species. Kind of just belongs to a thing. Kind of stops there. Uh, Uteranus, Uteranus Hawali. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So um, T Rex equals dinosaur dot new. Um, what do we call it? Uh, name T Rex uh, species Hawali. Uh, Genus is Uteranus. Right? Um, and it's going to default to is carnivore because that's about fair. So I'm going to, um, but maybe I don't include the name, right? Name is nil. It will be, yes, you're right, it will be default vegetarian. But I'm leaving it out just to show that we can like kind of handle some stuff, right? So, um, P T Rex. Okay, so. So we can have this, uh, cuteness is nil, is carnivore is false. So some things, was, some things were added, some things were left out. If I uh, left out this name, it would have an error, right? It would say, Somewhere. Whoo! Um, so this is an error in like PG, right? PG not null violation error, null value in column name violates not null constraint. But I can actually take a look at T Rex uh, before I do the save here. I might take a look at P T Rex dot valid. And actually, to be honest, I'm only like 70% sure of what's going to happen here. Uh, so this is valid, yeah. So right now, this is considered valid because it, it doesn't violate any Ruby side things, right? So what would be really helpful is if we knew this was valid before we sent it. And also, we could add some, some stuff of our own. So let's, um, let's add one of these. Um, I'm going to say validates. Uh, this is going to. Oh, J Matt's not sitting there. All right, I'll have to. I know there's a way that like a lot of Ruby Rails were like, oh, you should do validates presence of instead of validates name presence true, or you should do validates names presence true instead of presence of. But it's one or the other. If you find yourself working for a Rails company, they'll probably have a style guide and a preference. So I'm going to do it this way. So now I've just said validates name presence true. So let's try this. Um, T-Rex.save, and we're going to see what happens. All right. So for one thing, we didn't get an error, did we? No. It didn't cause an error, which is interesting. But it didn't save, did it? No, it did not. Yeah, it said rollback. So it tried to do it, and it, it didn't. So if we take a look at Trex here, we can see that it's, oh, the name is nil. And the valid is false. Uh, that's up here somewhere. <laughs> I lost it in here. There it is, false. It's not valid. So we can catch these validation errors before we try to send them to the database. Well, that's handy. We can have these, things, we can have these like validations on the database side as well just for the sake of like 
you know, making sure that we have them. So with some of them that we can write, but for the most part, we have like our validations here, and we can check to see if this is valid before we try to send it. Also, might I add, if I say uh, ptrex.trex.save here, it's going to say false. Now, how would I make this like throw an error if it shouldn't do this? Well, instead of using this, I'm sorry, what was it? You're going to have, it has, it has to be a lot. I, I can't tell if you're saying save or save. So which one are, uh, still, still can't tell. Uh, which of the methods should I use? Uh, somebody tell me. Uh, no, I shouldn't use save. Who can tell me which method I should use? Let me, let me hear you say which method I should be using. Save! Save! <laughs> That's right. Like, you can use the, the arm gestures if you have to, like, and I guess with the question marks, you'd be like, any? Uh, if you wanted to. But, yeah. So let's do uh, trex.save, and we're going to find out what happens. Okay, now we get that error, and this error is a different error. It's a validation error. Validation failed. Name can't be Blake. Blake. Also, can't be Blake. It's a terrible name. Can't be blank. Yeah. We'll actually add can't be Blake in a moment. Um, right? So once we have uh, trex.valid, we actually are able to take a look at the errors. trex.errors. Let's take a look at that. Uh-huh. So we can see that there's an error, details name error blank. Let's take a look at errors.messages. And we can see it's just a hash with name can't be Blake. Blank. Shoot, why is it so hard to say? Um, so we have, we have the ability on our Ruby site to actually check out the validity of these data objects, which is pretty handy. Because then we can make decisions about, like, actually, we're going to send the, we're going to re-render this form with the errors in it, that sort of thing. Put it in flash. You guys were there when I did, like, yeah, I had week four, day five with you guys, right? And I would, that was, time doesn't work like that anymore. That was many years ago. All right. So I might want to be able to make a thing where I have all the errors that can happen with something. So this, you'll notice it is a hash with, a, uh, with an array. So all the errors that can happen with something, I can, I can actually put them all together. So we can check for, uh, what are some of the other things we can check for? Uniqueness, absence, numericality, length, inclusion. So with that cuteness factor, validates cuteness. And I want to make sure that we have some very specific levels of cuteness. So I want to make sure that it, we are validating its inclusion in... Uh, cute. Terrifying. And like I could see how you think so. Right? Those are the those are pretty much the three measures of cuteness. <laughs> You're like, okay, I can see it, yeah. Right, so I might want to make sure that the inclusion is in one of these. Now let's let's see if I get that same thing. Yeah, yeah, cuteness is not included in the list. So when I say here, uh, dinosaur species, genus, cuteness, cute. All right, that's fine. It's, I don't know why you'd call it T-Rex cute, actually. I guess it depends on like, if you had a little tiny one. Come on, if you had like a little tiny Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it's like, I'm the king of dinosaurs, and you'd be like, your arms are so tiny. That would be adorable, and you know it. All right, so now name can't be blank. If I put anything else in here, uh, like what's another cuteness level we may have? Like, yeah, I get it. 
Maybe that's one. But we could be like, hey, that's not one of our possible lists, right? Or heinous. So let's go with terrifying. So there's a lot of really good built-in uh, validators for active record. Um, uniqueness is an interesting one. So when we do uniqueness, presence true, uniqueness true, it also, before it's loading, it actually does a check to see, is th does this name already exist? So you see there's an extra select query, right? So Ruby did a select query to find out if the name was unique. And if it wasn't, then we'd be, uh, in fact, let me, if I created two of these, oh, hold on, uh, dot create. Um, oh, come on. I didn't give it a name. That's right. Create name. Um, Jeff. You're a Tyrannosaur now. Now we have name has already been taken. Okay. So we can actually have some clever ones, clever validations out of the box. And again, these are happening on the Ruby side. So we can catch them in our code without it having to go to the database and then come back and tell us something went wrong. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. We can also have a uniqueness limitation within a scope. So like, for instance, if you want to have a bunch of teams, but you want to say like only one person is a manager for it's like one team has one manager, one leader, or whatever, then you can have something that's like, if you try to make two managers for the same team ID, then it's like, oh, actually, you can't be that because only one person can. So we can limit the scope if we want to. It's actually pretty amazing what we can create. So this is definitely a list worth looking through. Um, work, look through it a few times just to see what's available. And then you can kind of come back to it. And by the way, now that you have, if you have this as a set of expectations, you go to another framework, you may be able to, to, to create the same expectations in terms of validations. Okay, so now, um, uh, where is performing custom validations? Yeah, now this one's fun. All right, let's validate something. So I'm going to create a private method, right? Is that how to do private? For some reason, my brain's, I've been, I've been looking at Python all week, and now my, my brain forgets like the specifics of what works in Ruby and what works in Python. So Ruby private uh, class method. Yeah, this will do. Um, right, so let's make something. Let's call it has genus if species. So this is like, you can either have species null or you can have a, should I make sure that they're both true, like the pair of them? So um, what I might say here is uh, if genus is nil, Then I'm going to do an else if species is nil. And, and what I'm going to do here is if genus is nil, and species is not nil, then I'm going to say errors.add. And here I'm going to add. Um, it's supposed to be uh, genus. So this is the thing I'm 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 hitting the genus specifically. This is an error on the genus. So and this is going to say I'm going to say that it is required if species present, right? 
if species is nil and genus is not nil, I'm going to say errors.add uh, species. Genus present. Also, semicolons. What am I thinking? So now I can say validate. Um, has genus of species. So uh, let me let me take off this one, Jeff, and leave out the species. Oh, I guess just private. Okay, so now species uh, required if genus is present. Okay, fine. Let me. Put that back in. Let me take out the genus. OK, genus is required if species is present. So we can do all sorts of things here. We can do things that have uh, queries that we can have. We can actually make really good ones. A really, um, uh, we might, uh, these, these, pa these dinosaurs, they may have passwords. <laughs> sure. Right? So I might be able to say this. Um, like, here's one, here's the kind of thing I end up creating quite a lot is def uh, strong password. Now, the question of whether this actually like means anything or whatever is another story entirely. But I can say, let me see how to do a Ruby regex real quick. Rubular. Okay, so I can say, yeah, there we go. So if dot, and I'm looking for match. Um, last I'm really looking not for a just a method, just as like, does it have it? But fine, if this matches password, or if bang, then here I'm going to say errors.add password um, must have uppercase letter. So password is going to be a uh, Secret, because dinosaurs famously terrible at picking passwords. Uh, not as bad as admin. Not that much better. All right. So, okay. Um, if bang, let me actually do a. Oh, right. I would have to say validate. Okay, password must have upcase letter. Uh, and then how about if A to Z dot match password <laughs> if um, And then uh, let's just say any of the, uh, uh, what are we going to put in here? I guess like a, all the swears. All right. 
I know. Uh, let's do a dent and a dash. Dot match password. Does anyone know what I'm talking about, by the way? Know what these are? Seeing these? These are called regular expressions. And what they are is just ways of like looking for certain patterns in strings. So must have special character. And I'm going to put. I am terrified to see the red eggs grow for your chat yet. Pretty certain it inadvertently calls Satan. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, validation. So now we have a series of validations. The password has all these things. It's like, hey, it must have an uppercase letter. must have a digit. must have special character. One of those. One of those. E.g. Yeah, to be clear, it looks like I kind of swore just at the end there. All right, so, um, yeah. We now have validation. We have a way to check if our data is valid on the, on the, the code side, rather, like on the server side rather than on the database, right? Which means we can make certain decisions here a little bit quicker. And we don't have to wait for the database to tell us that they screwed up. Cool, cool, cool. Moreover, the database is only really going to tell us if one thing screwed up. This will tell us all the ways that this is not. So we can fill out a form with like a whole bunch of information here. It's handy. So handy, you don't even know. All right. No one, no one caught the Iggy Azalea reference? It's fine. All right. Okay, so, uh, right, that's fair enough. Um, it was it was subtle. Okay, um, right. So we've talked about that. Uh, one thing I want to um, have real quickly is I want to let you know about scopes. So this is kind of part of the query interface. A surprisingly easy, surprisingly handy, easy way of kind of like, um, you know, building in filters that you're going to use frequently in your queries. So, scopes. Okay. So, um, we have these dinosaurs, dinosaurs. And uh, what we can do is that we can add a scope. For instance, carnivores. And this is just going to give us, I'm going to use the lambda syntax here. That's what this is. And it, it could also be called a stabby. Sometimes it's called the thin arrow as opposed to the fat arrow. Like sometimes you'll see the the double e the double the equal that it was referred to as a fat arrow function. Um, so where, and this is where uh, is carnivore. It's true. So now we've done that. So now when I create this um, T Rex carnivore, there is carnivore. And I can create, um, actually, let me, I just realized it is way too late to be drinking more coffee. Okay, uh, let's look at scopes. Scopes. Um, right, so I'm going to add this here. I'm going to keep my validations, but I'm going to take off this stuff. So, dinosaur.create. Uh, who else wants to be a dinosaur? 
cool. It is how one spells Ankylosaurus, correct? Ankylosaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am fairly certain that this is a... Uh, or is it a... All right. I thought I'd seen her before. Because <laughs> it's... All right. Okay. Uh, Ankylosaurus. Uh, dinosaur. Doc creates name. Benji. I know. We'll, we'll do space when we're not doing dinosaurs. One genre at a time. Uh, and let's do... Uh, Right, it's true. And I did just watch the uh, the Doctor Who episode, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, but that is another sp story entirely. Species. Um, yeah, it's about the size of it. Species is, that's a genus. Are you taking away my dog? Oh. <laughs> Magna Ventris. So I guess I can leave that false because it's going to. Um, so, Ruby Scopes. Okay. So now, oh. Is there a. Let's find out if there's a problem. Um, does it need it? Oh, that's right. Genus. See, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to solve this particular problem of it failing silently. So instead of using the create method, uh, does anyone know what I'll be using instead? No, not new. Come on. It, Frank's got it. Anyone else? Which one? I just want to hear people. I just want to hear people yell Ruby methods. Is that so much time? Create! Right. Um, you have to see it like a mad scientist. That's a big part of it. Um, Uteranus. Okay. So let's do... See if that. And my error is validation failed. Cuteness is not included in the list. Got to get that cuteness. Yo, no, it's totally cute. I think we can all, we can all agree about that on the ankylosaurus. Okay, so now we have these two uh, cute dinosaurs. So now I can say dinosaur. Uh, P dinosaur dot um, carnivores. Right? And because I created that scope, it's able to do a, a request on all the carnivores. In fact, I can see uh, dot to SQL. So if you find that you have a condition like this, um, you can use this for like where's or orders or something like that. If you find that you have something like this that you're like frequently using, this is a really good way of kind of building that query from blocks that you just that are very app specific. So in this case, carnivores is a thing, right? And I don't want to have to write dot where is carnivore. And maybe I even change how carnivore works, right? Maybe instead of it being a carnivore flag, I turn it to a, um, uh, you know, it's, an, it's a string and it's going to take carnivore, omnivore, and herbivore, right? And so in that case, maybe my carnivore is going to be, hey, I want anything where it's either carnivore or omnivore. And maybe for herbivore, I want anything where it's herbivore and omnivore. Right? An omnivore is something that eats both plants. And y'all are omnivores. Unless, except for 
I was like, except for Frank, obviously. Okay, so now we are able to, um, yeah, we're able to see that to SQL. So it's a, it's part of a query. So it's a way for us to sort of build things that are going to be in our queries, just right into the model, and that really helps. Uh, some of the Compass code has some of those models have like tons and tons of scopes, you know, a cohort that's active, a cohort that's like graduated. Like, there's a lot of ways to kind of check to see this. So, super handy. Okay. Okay, and then one last thing I want to talk about. And I gotta be honest, um, I'm not sure, like this is a thing that you should like, if, if you think this is the answer to your problem, you may need to stop for a moment and think about another answer to your problem. But you guys remember lifecycle methods from React? You know, like four days ago. Four or five days ago, yeah. So, um, what was what's a lifecycle method? Sorry, I'm going to ask. In general, what are the lifecycle methods? Like, what's the point of them? Yeah. So you know, basically, you're able to to find out when certain things have happened upon the lifecycle of a, of a component, right? And it has like the unmounting phase and the updating phase, sorry, the mounting phase, the updating phase, and the unmounting phase, right? Mounting happens only once, happens once and only once. Updating can happen any number of times from zero to infinity, and the unmounting might occur. But if it does occur, it'll only occur once, right? Okay, so this is, uh, we have a very similar thing for in, in Active Record, and they're called callbacks. Not exactly like we would use call, like our definition of callback from week one, a, a, a function that's passed another function. This isn't exactly that. This is more like we another another term that we use quite frequently for this sort of thing is hooks, lifecycle hooks. It's basically, when this happens, it just lets us know, hey, this happened. So uh, we, it's almost like we kind of hook some functionality into that. And like it, it's kind of along for the ride, you know. I don't know. It's really hard to to think of a not totally disturbing analogy with hooks. So try not to think about it too much. It's like when something hooks your umbrella and it takes it with you. You're like no, like that. It's like when that. It's like when you and your friends, um, it, like four of your friends, hit that guy. And then the next summer, he was like, I know you did last summer. And then you were like, and he had the, and like your, your friend Sarah Michelle Geller was like in that one alley. And she was like, all she had to do was run towards the people, but she like stopped and turned around. Ugh. All right. <laughs> okay. God forbid you should encourage me. All right. Okay, so the object lifecycle. So we have uh, callbacks, overview, callbacks, registration. So we can, um, <laughs> uh, we can do uh, registration here. And so basically, it's a lot like validate, where we say, um, hey, uh, run this private method. So we can, we can create private methods. Um, so here's the creating an object before validation, after validation, before save, around save, before create, around create, after create, after save, after commit, after rollback. Then we have updating, destroying, right? So um, what's a good example of this? Oh, yikes. Yeah, a little more there. Hold on. Yeah, I'm very crackly. I don't know what it is, but it's entertaining. All right, so let's say for a moment that we're doing like, there's a, a one, one cohort a while back that was like, I uh, was saying, what should our app be about? And they were like, wizard dueling, right? So let's go back to wizards.
Okay, so we have, um, we have, like, we're going to make a schema. Dot define do. All right. So we are going to, um, we're going to define this. We're going to say end. We're going to um, drop table spells if uh, active record colon colon base dot connection dot exists. Luckily, when you're actually doing your migrations, you won't have to worry about this because people will do your migrations in order you know it exists. I have to do this because lecture. Oh, dot table exists. Spells. Wizards. Right, so we can have, um, let's create table wizards uh, not if just d do do t and and we're going to say um, you know t dot string name we're going to say t dot uh, house or it's got string house right um, and then we're going to create table spells actually yeah so um uh, t dot string name uh, t dot I don't know like what's what like if we're making a game that has to do with like casting spells what's the uh, what are some things that should be along with this L Right, yeah. Element. T dot string element. I always forget like which one's the type and which one's the yeah. Alright. As in, yeah, how much how much damage it causes. Um a T S string or T dot integer damage. And then how about uh T dot decimal cooldown? Uh T dot decimal um, mana cost. All right. Mana is, <laughs> we use like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, cooldown is the amount of time it takes before I can do this one again. Uh, mana cost is how much, like, of my pool of magical energy it ha it takes, right? <laughs> Element is, um, like, uh, earth, water, fire, and air. So if you, yeah. Yeah, you can also add more in there. Uh, light, shadow. Right. Okay, this is this has gone off the rails. All right, uh, I'm going to add another thing in here, which is uh, what? No, it was not. But here we are. So uh, if Create wizards, create spells, um, create table, wizard spells, do, t, uh, end, we're going to say here, t dot references, wizard, t dot uh, references, wizard, references, spell. Okay. Class, wizard, active record, St you know, like this takes a long time, but it still takes less time than writing out like every query, so I'm not going to, there's like only so much complaining I can do. There's a lot of complaining I can do. I, I, I shouldn't sell myself for it. Short. Sell myself for it? Ugh. Brain words, no work. Okay. Um, 
a wizard spell has belongs to a wizard belongs to a spell. Belongs to belongs to spell. Um, right. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, I want to create the spells first, actually. And yeah, uh, belongs to wizard, belongs to spell. Has many um, wizard spells, right? And here's a cool thing: uh, I I really care about what spells I have, not like the association. Like I want to see the spells themselves, so I can say has many spells through wizard spells. That's right. I can access my spells directly instead of having to do like a map over them. So that's handy. Same thing here. Uh, has many wizard spells. Has many wizards through wizard spells. Cool. All right. And here I'm going to create, um, you get two spells to start with. Well, there's two spells we're going to start with. And we, we should have a whole, like, whole setup of spells, of course. But let's do, uh, you can open locks. Uh, Spell.create. Um, doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, you get two spells, Alahomora and Avada Kedavra. <laughs> That escalated quickly. Okay. Name. Alahamora. Uh, element. Obviously, that's an earth elemental. Got to be right, because it like locks are part of the earth. Generally speaking, um, unless it's like the wind unlocking. Had you thought of that? No. Wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, a element damage uh, zero. Um, cooldown doesn't even like one, whatever. Right? I don't have a thing. And mana cost is three. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so. Um, I, got, I, haven't, I haven't fixed the economy of the rules here, so <laughs> let's just do that. Alahamora and um, Wingardium Leviosa. That is definitely a wind elemental. Damage zero, cooldown one, mana cost zero. Three. Okay, so the idea should be that... Um, when I create a wizard, I am going to assign them to wizard spells. Right? Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do a... Um, so after create... So after I have created this thing, then I have an ID, right? And I can create two wizard spells. So when I've created the wizard, a word I just said for money, and define... When your parents are like, this is all, this is, this is useless. Like, I'm someday going to say wizard for money. And people are going to be like, thank you for having say, said wizard. Here is your money. All right. So after create, um, add to spells, right? So uh, private def spells. All right, so let's take a look at this. Add two spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to say here is that um, uh, wizard spells dot create spell alahomora wizard spells dot create spell. Uh, 
Wingardium Leviosa. Did we figure out which, if it was supposed to be Leviosa or Leviosa? It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Right, okay. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let, me, let me create something here. Um, what am I going to do? Um, I guess I want to say um, Harry equals uh, wizard dot new name Harry Patterson. All right. Um, right, and I got, he's got a house, right? Um, can't use Griffins, so. Manticore door. All right. <laughs> Just so our, it's Larry Potterson, so our, our, our copyright lawyers who are here like every other day don't get us. All right, so. I have now, let, let's, let's take a look at Larry. I'm also going to, um, yeah, so right now I've created uh, Larry, uh, Ruby, and oh, it's mad for unknown attribute cooldown. It's one, dirt, one, it's one, dirt, one word, cooldown, cooldown. Fair enough. Cool, so now you'll notice that I have created two um, spells. I have created my, and I have made a wizard object, but it has no ID, right? So check this out, what's gonna happen on Larry.save. It's gonna get mad at me for reasons. In no variable or method alhamora. Did I call it alohamora? Like the. Because it's sort of like existing out here. Wingardium Leviosa. All right. Um, sure. How about we just do this? Find by, right? Uh, undefined local variable or method on Hamora. Yeah, it's not able to find the. Uh, Fine by let's see if that's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So now what's happened is when I actually I didn't have to create those and say like, oh, I've created Larry. Now I'm gonna give him two spells, right? I just put this in part of the model and now this is part of the model logic. And I can also make this, hey. Um, I have, if, if I just tried to uh, Larry dot um, destroy, then it would be, it wouldn't allow me to do that because obviously I can't, um, it's going to have a problem with, it. wait, shouldn't it have? Oh, apparently it's fine with that. Because um, it should have had a, oh, you know what, you know what, I forgot. Foreign key. Yeah, foreign key true. Uh, foreign key true, null, false. Foreign key true, null, false. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. We have to, if we wanted to really destroy them, we also have to destroy the Horcruxes. So, um, 
So this is mad because we can't do that, right? So one thing I could add to this, I could do it on delete cascade, but I can also just say here, hey, um, delete spells is just going to be right. Now, where do I want to actually delete these spells? So here's the things on destroying an object. Where, where would I actually want to do this? Before, why before destroy? Right, so I can do them before I off Larry. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, before destroy. And this is like component will unmount, you know, kind of same idea. Uh, destroy, what do I call it? Delete spells. And so now, that error won't happen. Are there any questions? Keep on staring at Jeffrey. Hey, buddy. All right. <laughs> what up? He's having this weird dream about wizards. All right. Um, and dinosaurs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, in that case, you all have fun with whatever it is you're doing. See ya.